Okay. <laughs> All right. Jeez, with this, the way that we're starting this Big Bun Game Club with friends has been wild. I'm joined by Charles. What's going on, everybody? So we figured it'd be best to start talking about Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night. This one, unlike the other episodes I've done where I just talk about the game after I beat it, we did something completely different this time around, where we're just going to talk about our impressions first, and then go on and talk about how we played it. If you want to play alongside us, feel free. Uh, you always type in your own opinions on the comment section if you want. So, uh... I'll have you, you start. Know, I, just realized, I just realized we probably the last time we actually saw each other was exactly a year ago. Oh, you're, Paxi. you're right. Yeah, like, which is funny to me because I was not even thinking about PAX, PAX East, um, last year at all. And then you just, out of the blue, it was like, oh, you want to go to PAX? And I was like, oh, I haven't been there in like, ten, like I, I'd been to PAX when they first started doing PAX East. And it was yeah. so, like... At East, it was like it's very easy to see. Like they, you know, a lot of people were not sure if it was gonna stick around, so it had a very small presence. But going to it now is like completely different. And it was, and I, so I was, I keep thinking about that. I was like, man, I really wish we could go this year. I like that got me into like wanting to go more. Uh, yeah, I know. But I'm still pissed. I, I, I still get mad. Uh, I follow Mega Sixty Four on Twitter, and they kept, they keep posting the screenshots of their panel. Where they Camille walk in, and I was like, we, I could have, I could have been there. I, we were so yeah. close, but it's like well, it was just. Oh, well, we got to meet Camille, so that's yeah. fine. It, it panned out. I mean, I was, uh, I got, we got two great pictures of him with the mask on and off. So it's like, yeah, I posted yeah, I that, like, and like, someone said, off. someone said to me, uh, oh, oh, uh, Theo's gonna get the uh, uh, COVID because uh, <laughs> I was standing right next to him with the, the mask off, and I was like. And at that point, I, I was very nervous. Like, after I, I left your place, I was like, oh, shit, I got, like... I, I checked my, my temperature, like, every day, almost, to see if it was going to be, like, anything higher and nothing happened. So I was like, oh, that's 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 great. So it's... Dude, but it's crazy because the world locked down the next week. I yeah. Think. And, I mean, like... A couple days later. Yeah, and everyone that was there was still, like, should, should we be here? Like, I mean, a lot of people like were, were thinking that, like, even, like... Uh, a few podcasts on the on Mega Sixty Four was talking about like, yeah, we were at Pax East and we were just like, Sh should we go? Like, should we be here? Uh, like, one of the people didn't even show up because of um because of the pandemic. Because I mean, which made sense. He had a family to begin with. He had kids and and a wife. So it's like, okay, he sure he could say he could, you know. I didn't know he stayed. So the whole time was kind of eyeing them to get the whole gang in the picture. But it's like no. That one guy was never going to be there, so it's, I was going to get a picture anyway. But it was like, ah, oh. but it made you know sense. But it was I nice. I was thinking about this. You you made me laugh at one point because you were like, <laughs> you were at some like exhibit or whatever, and you coughed or something, and some lady looked at you like, oh yeah, and, and like, like what's your problem, lady? Yeah, like and and I wasn't even close to her. I wasn't like, <laughs> I don't even think we were even in line for the same thing. But I, I was like doing this, like I, I did the thing you were supposed to do when, yeah. well, I don't remember now actually, because I think it was either I did this and she still freaked out or it was like, you know, it was just nowhere that she'd had to even worry. And I was like, oh, yeah. you know, it had, like, I couldn't, like, I didn't have time. Uh, it was one yeah. of those two things, but uh, it was that. And then like, I remember like this, I was in line for Animal Crossing, this person in front of me or behind me was saying like, Oh yeah, it's great to be here with. They have all these like san san sanitation wipes, all this stuff, and they were going on and on about like hygiene. And I was like, oh, like th this was stuff I I would always think about like beforehand, like just because you're going to a convention and you're touching controllers with many other people anyway. Right. So it's like you know you're always gonna wash your hands anyway. It's like you know whatever. If you want to do anything like that's personable, you do it at home first, then and then you leave. Like I don't know. It's yeah. it's. All this stuff that's like you don't that you don't that you might do without thinking is now like being was more in the forefront. But it, right. it is just wild. Like the Animal Crossing booth was the the most packed. Like they, I know. And it was like, what were we supposed to do? Like it's. <laughs> we didn't get COVID then. I'm I'm really surprised. Like that had really had the potential to be a big like 
spreading event. So yeah. we got really lucky, I think. And I mean, even, I was like, eh, fuck it. Let's I go. went. I was even in Boston the month before, I think, uh, for my birthday. Uh, my parent, my mom, and my brother wanted to take me out, so we went there. And was, and even then, I was like, I should we even be here? Like, I was, I was like, because at that point, like, some news is go- going around, and I think on the last day we were there, it was like. Oh yeah, this one guy got like quarantined in, in uh, Boston. It's like, oh, oh, great! Like, <laughs> I don't know where this is. I don't know who this person is. I I don't know what happened, but it's like, yeah, he got it, and, and now he's locked in his apartment because of it. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah. But um, look at this. a year later, and now we have to start a video game club because we still are fucked with isolation. So, well, it's moving forward. I, I mean. Perfect. Huh? Perfect segue to start talking about the game we're gonna play, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, may- maybe there'll be some some uh, epidemics in Bloodstained. I mean, the, the name the name of the game is Bloodstained. Right. So. Sounds like a medical problem. Yeah, you know, there there could be some <laughs> some stains of blood in there. You know, you know, the whole thing that like, has vampires in it. Maybe maybe that's like vampires are COVID of that time. Yeah. Exactly. It's a it's a it's an epidemic, man. Yeah. What do you know about this game? Because I don't, I don't really know much. The only things I know is that it had a Kickstarter, and obviously it takes a lot of inspiration from Castlevania Symphony of the Night, right? Yeah. And I it, think one well, of the directors from that. Yeah, is, yeah. yeah. Uh, right? The person who Castlevania did this, which is also, which is kind of funny. With the Kickstarter, they did a video with Mega sixty four to uh, advertise it, and the video was actually it was really clever. Like it was an, a a um. A closed down hotel that they were using, and they had it. They had him as a vampire hunter, uh, going through this hotel, and and the, it was just they, they were like, okay, we gotta summon Dracula. How are we gonna summon that? We gotta get the world's oldest technology. And it's like, all right, a Nokia phone, a uh, Palm Pilot, like all these like this like boomer technology that used to be around in the early two thousands. They summon the, they summon Va- Dracula and and the uh, director of Bloodstained and Castlevania comes in to, to face him. It ends with him like giving him the Kickstarter amount as a bill, like oh yeah, this is my my vampire hunter bill. It's this amount. And it's like oh, fucking asshole. Like so like that's <laughs> that's all I knew of it at the time. But then uh, I tried out the first Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon, which is was that, like, the version or whatever. The yeah, one, it's like, a very like it's a very retro version of. Like it, it was the the ape version. This one was like notoriously difficult, and it's very hard. Uh, I did it, and I I dropped the game immediately because I couldn't get past the beginning. I was like, oh, I don't know. I got lost, and I kept dying. So it's like this is like I I I don't have any patience. I do want to go back to it. I still own it, but it's like I'll I'll just move on. I did play Curse of the Moon too, which is way better. That one I loved way more. So tell me something about Curse of the Moon. Now is it? And I hate that this is the term, but you know, the, is it is it like a Metroidvania? Yeah, as they call them. I think it is. Like, okay, so it's not like just linear levels. No, like it's it starts off linear, but I think it it opens up the more you go in. It's like, oh, you could go to this floor, you go to that floor, and and that intimidated me a little bit because it's like I don't know where I'm going. There's no checkpoints. I don't know how to get health back if I lose health, and like it's just stuff I didn't know innately because I never. The only Castlevania game I played, I to full was the lord of shadow franchise mm-hmm. which and is not anything like the no kind of game. no that one was like god of war pretty much yeah uh yeah. but then i've played the did a, a remastered collection of like symphony of the night and uh the one before that i think like this Rondo. is one collection yeah yeah that one i played on my psp i loved that game the music was yeah. so fucking good and they used to sell it, and then they removed it because, like, some licensing issues. And I was like, the music was so good. You know what the weirdest thing about those games? For some reason, Symphony of the Night, like, the only way, where is, place you can find them is, like, on PlayStation, PlayStation 3, and then on, like, Android. Yeah. I can't, like, I've been playing it. I have, like, a, a Fire tablet, and I have, like, a controller that I connect to it. And that's how I've been playing Symphony of the Night. Oh, but it's I- like... Can't find it anywhere else. I have it on my PS3 too, but I just never turn it on. Uh, I I think they might have put it on the on the Wii U of all of all things. I think, but uh, that's another one that who gives a fuck? Yeah. Who's gonna fucking use Wii U? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I so I played that one, and I the only thing I liked about it is I liked the animation of the walk cycle versus like this. Dun, 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 what, dun, 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 dun. 
Yeah, like I just love how like badass he walks, and it's like That's the only thing you like about that game. Uh, I I didn't I didn't get far into it. I do like the, I do like the game. I do like the game. It, I didn't draw it because I I didn't like it. It was just like okay, like I'll go back to it. I keep forgetting to go back to it. And also, yeah. fucking video games take all your hard drive space. Like yeah. All these hogs. I used to, not Castlevania. Well, no, but like I just didn't have room for it because I wanted to to, to play this other game that kicked it off. Oh, um, come on! Because I, I I deleted games as like I haven't played this in months. I always go back to it anyway, so it's like I'll delete that for now and beat this and delete that and go redownload that whatever. Uh, I mean now I'm a little bit more apprehensive because it's called Pilgrim. How that shit happened in the past, where it's like, oh yeah, it's gone forever. Yeah, I mean now it's it now it's available everywhere, and it's like, you know, I I feel like limited run games saw that and was like we can make a fucking goose egg with this because ah. they're baking on people like so afraid of losing the game again. That's like I gotta buy it physically just to be sure to have it. <laughs> Yeah. But I mean now it's yeah, like it's, who knows what they did with it. I don't want I don't want to get too much into this because it's a it's a it's a it's a very v sad future for games, but I'm thinking they're going to start treating games like streaming services where it's like you have a Netflix like you know the Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. They're going to have that and that's pretty much going to be all you can do to play games. I I feel like it it will never be the only way to get games because well, because like you know, you have all you have, you know, you have like people in the, in the military that might that might game, and they might not have a stable connection. You think maybe. They don't talk about people. Well, <laughs> well, that's that's one example. Then there's other examples like people who, who just don't have internet connection. But I don't they care about them either. They don't. <laughs> well, well, that's a very cynical look. I mean, I I I don't think that there. I don't think it's impossible for. I, I think it's just, it's always going to be a focus to drive people to those services. I just don't think it's going to be like okay, you'll never buy you'll never buy these games ever again because I think to a point you're going to get to a point where studios are going to be like, why do we want a service that it will be dictated by Sony? Because Sony can just say, because like with EA Origins for example, they had right. issues with Sony where it's like Sony's like no. No, we don't want your service on our platform. It's competition. Fuck that. No. But that's the thing. It's just gonna. It's gonna go. Everything's gonna go to the computers. Like Epic Games has a thing. EA yeah. has a thing. There's Steam. Like all that stuff is just gonna be. They're all gonna have their own storefronts, and it's all gonna be like pay us monthly. You don't own any of your games. And the problem is, the problem isn't gonna be. There's no demand, but the demand is gonna be so low that it's like, like you'll care about it. But the average bum isn't going to give a shit if they have to like lease their games. They're going to forget about it in five yeah. seconds. I mean, I think, so. but you know, to uh, Game Pass's credit, that at least, like, I, I mean, it, it is like you know, early days like Netflix, where Netflix had all of these shows and it was great and all this stuff, and then like it just kind of was like, okay, now we're losing shows left and right. Now you're just you get what you get now at this point. But <laughs> uh, Game Pass is like in, in this era where it has all these games that. You know they're not going to go anywhere else. Like Hellblade is not going to just leave Game Pass now. I mean, it's Hellblade, but it's but some games have been leaving that made no sense to me. Like Indivisible used to be offered, and then it's like oh now that's gone. It's like Indivisible is an indie game to begin with that is also from a studio that is no more, pretty much. Like yeah, but that's another thing is like rights expire. Like it's so annoying. Yeah, that they can't like they can't like re-release Diddy Kong Racing. Because the, the the it belongs to Rare, but it's like but but you know, use these licenses, so it's like in perpetuity we can just release the game, like yeah. But you know, I I think with like the attitude with, with like Microsoft though, I I feel like if if Nintendo wanted Diddy Kong Racing, they they could probably get it because they could probably be like, hey, Rare, give it give us Diddy Kong, and Microsoft would be like, sure, why not? Because Microsoft did give Nintendo permission to use Banjo Kazooie and Smash really? Brothers, yeah. The added, oh, the added in? banjo. Oh, they're in it. Yeah, they're in it. They're they're playable characters, wow. and uh, but like that's different though, because it's not technically because like Super Smash Brothers is full of guest characters. Well, yeah, but these so, guest characters were not owned by like competing companies. They were owned by software companies. Like Square is not owned by Sony, so they could they could put cloud in anything. It's just that they, yeah. you know. They have the right. It's just that with Banjo, it's owned by Microsoft because Microsoft owns Rare. So it's like that. That became like okay. Can they add add Banjo if they wanted? And 
Like, and Microsoft was like, yeah, sure, fuck it. Have Banjo, you know, why not? Like, yeah. I guess you're, I guess you're right, but they still have to have the credit. Like that's the problem. That's the problem with all this Super Smash Brothers brawl stuff. Is like in the future, like Konami could be like, you know what, we don't want Solid Snake in there anymore. Yeah, well, I think and then you just have to take him out. I I think it got to the point where like, <laughs> so I think like there was an article I read last year or so where Sakurai just told people straight up, don't expect the next Smash Brothers game to have this roster from Ultimate. Like this is like a okay. one time thing. And yeah. I said that like, I thought it was a no-brainer because it's like it's a way big roster. Like because it's it's been no secret that Sakurai wanted to stop making Smash Brothers. Like he, every Smash game that was made, it was like he was forced to make it. Like that's why Brawl is so bad. It's like he was like he, he it was like he like I guess he liked working on it, but it was just that he just wanted to stop working on it. Like he wanted to stop at Melee. Melee was supposed to be the last. It, it, it's the it's the Hideo Kojima problem. Yeah, but with it's Kojima like, too, or we're gonna kill you. Yeah, <laughs> and I think like, like a lot of people want to dissect what happened in MGS Five and blame it either on one or the other. I think it, I think it was both. I think Kojima there and Konami wasn't fucked. Even MGS Three though, huh? There wasn't even supposed to be an MGS Three. Yeah, yeah. He was like, like, I'm done with it after two. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I think. And I think with three, he wanted he he did want to make that story, but I think he, he I felt that was more of like a, like a, a um love hate kind of game where it's like, yeah, you want new Metal Gear, yeah, well, it's not gonna continue from two, it's gonna go back in time. It's like oh oh shit, like I felt that he kind of made it purposely a prequel to piss people off or or think that it would because like two ends on such a cliffhanger that people would probably assume automatically that three would follow right after. And for three to be like, no, it's gonna go back in time. It's like, oh, yeah. okay. I kind, of thought, I kind of felt like that was just three going back in time was more. He wanted a blank slate. Yeah, I think I think it was a lot of that. But I think uh, I think it, a lot of people this was mad that it didn't answer all the questions. But I think it kind of did in the sense like I was gonna say that. Yeah, because I mean, it tells you like, it gives you a timeline at the end. It tells you what happened with the philosophers that they became the patriots. All this stuff, and it was like it, le- it left you to think about stuff. Then, like, uh, Kojima re- received so much death threats to make four. He made four, and it was like it, this is gonna be bullying people into fucking making games. Psychos. Yeah, and then like five, I I felt five like five. It was like he was beaten to submission where he was like, I'm gonna just. Yeah, I'll make five. Fuck yeah! And it, and he was like, "I'm gonna do something that's so new and and unheard of." And I and I do think that awesome game. Yeah, it's a, amazing game. Probably I, the best gameplay wise of all. Yeah, of them. I think I, I think that some of the cassette tapes were supposed to be cutscenes. I think some of them were all were planned, and they never got around to finish them. So it's like, yeah, it's clearly, the game's clearly not finished. Yeah, and I think you it was. You look at it, and you know the game's not done. And I think. uh it was a mix of Kojima going over budget, maybe like oh we he spent all this money on on Kiefer and all this stuff, all this all this research on the on this new engine that they wanted to make. Like they like he did a lot of work for the Fox engine, thinking oh this yeah. will make programming so much easier in the future. But all that R and D was probably like fucking millions to work on. Good, good for him though. Yeah, but he's like you but know, now he can't. Hang out. But, Sutherland. Like, that was a, there's no reason to have Kiefer Sutherland in that game. He was probably just like, I want to meet him. Konami, make it happen. Because yeah. he could make him do anything he wanted. And I, probably, that's probably what happened. He was probably like, you know what? I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. We're going to make a brand new game engine. I want to hang out with Kiefer Sutherland. Make it happen. And then they were like, we're sick of his shit. Like, put the game out and then fire him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we're getting <laughs> this This whole video got derailed. Let's. let's oh, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Yeah, it. It, it's it's good. You know, everyone has gamer moments. I mean, this is just a gamer moment. So it's right. So uh, so to go back to to uh, Bloodstained, uh, that was a uh, a crowdfunding game. He did Castlevania and all the, all that shit. Uh, I I played a very little of Bloodstained: Ritual of the Night. Uh, before recording this, not recently though. I played it like last year or the year before. Uh, so I made it to like probably like the. After the tutorial, like right there is where I stopped, but uh, the rest of the game, I I kind of feel like it. I kind of think it's gonna be one of those games where the beginning is gonna be very different from the rest of the game. Like it starts off very like okay, this is 
A very small room to go through. Oh, here's a boss. Okay, now here's the, the upgrade system. And it's like, okay. This, and the upgrade system, would I remember it being a little, like, um, in, like intuitive. Like, there's a lot, a lot of systems to keep track of with what you're upgrading. And it's like, so it's, like, interesting. So I think, like, the more you go into it, it's going to be, like, you. it's going to be more explorative. And I do think it's... And I think it channels a lot of classic Castlevania as well, from little as I played uh, of those games, like Symphony of the Night and um, uh, Cro uh, Dra Dracula Chronicles, like those two games, like Dracula, yeah, yeah. Honor, Blood, whatever you want. To call it. Yeah, and and those like I I see the uh, I see the the um, the blueprint of the of those games, like it because a lot of times like you think like you know if you see like uh, the Mega Man creator, like oh I'm gonna make a a spiritual successor and it's like he tries to recreate it like one to one and it just fails oh it's so bad yeah and did you play it no i i did still I, I still i it, it just looked so like so bland as like i i don't need to play this and i wasn't a huge I, mega man fan anyway so it's i i saw it that kickstarter made a ton of money i was like okay it looks like shit but maybe like they focused on gameplay it stinks yeah. It's not good. It's not a good game. It's really, and really it's, disappointing. And it's kind of like the inverse of what happened with Ritual of uh, Ritual of the Night for Bloodstained. That one, when they first showed it off, it was like, people were saying, uh, you know, this is like early footage. It's not really good looking. I mean, I really hope this isn't the final game, whatever. Uh, they did this one trailer where they went out of their way. <laughs> they went out of their way to like... Uh, call it every single criticism they received. They put it in the trailer, like, okay, you said this. Here you go. It's brand new. Here's like they changed the entire like way the game looks, the way it plays, everything. And the, it, it was like, the, like it, it, they went out of their way to to show you, to show the viewer, like we listened to what you said and this is what what we did. And ev after that, everyone was like, this game is gonna be fucking amazing. Hell yeah! Like it it, it drove like hype up way more. Uh, and it got to the point where when it released, the one thing I kept hearing about was the Switch version was the worst version of that game. Uh, which, sure, it makes sense because it's the Switch, but it's like, it, it, uh, it could wait, have used wait, some explain polish. Explain that, explain that before you get a million hate comments. The hate, the, it's because the Switch has weaker hardware, right? <laughs> it was that, and I think, I think, I, I just, because they did patch it since, and it runs better. It runs better mm -hmm. now than it did at launch, but uh, it, it was just. I I think what happened was it was the they weren't making the game for that so for that console. They made it for the PS4 right. and PC, and it's like, oh, oh, the Switch is is out. Everyone loves it. We could put it on that, but it's like, you know, they they tried to make some compromise with the resolution and all this stuff, and it kind of affected some of the combat, how the invincibility frames would work, or something. I heard some mm -hmm. something like that, and it's like, oh, well, now that's fixed and. Now it's playable. Now you can actually get through through the game. But that's, for all intents and purposes, I am playing on PS4. I I want to make that clear, though. I'm not the I'm Switch version. Huh? Um, I I want to see how this game looks because I'm actually surprised. And like maybe it's just poor optimization or something. But like from what I've seen, and I haven't looked at it for a while, it doesn't seem like it would be that demanding of a game, right? It, uh, I think what it was was that it's a 1080p game. And I, I don't know the frame rate it ran on, but when they put it on the Switch, it was like I, I think once they down downscaled the resolution, the frame the frame rate got like fucked up somewhere. I don't know. It, I I don't know the full details. There was a there's a video somewhere I watched a long time ago to see what you know the difference, but it was like I don't remember the exact. I just remember hearing that there were some issues that had to be that had to be patched out. I did talk to someone who played it on the Switch who said that they didn't have any issues with it. Mostly it was like yeah, it's fine. I mean people are just. Um, uh -huh. being very, like, um, high expectations with it. It's like, you know, play Witcher 3 on the Switch, and it's like, yeah, obviously it's not going to be a PS4 game, but it runs very well for, for what they got done with it. And yeah. with Doom, Eter with Doom uh, 2016, I think Doom Eternal also runs pretty good on the Switch. But, uh, yeah. I mean, these, there's, there's ways you can get around it. I think it's just, it's, it's hardware that's so, like, weird, because it, it runs differently docked and portable and it's like and you have to make it work for both yeah, yeah. it's 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 That's rough it's well, not not our problem so who cares yeah i mean we're just gamers 
<laughs> yeah, we're gamers, man. <laughs> um, but what I was going to say is, so have you played um, like any of the DS Castlevanias, like no. Harmony of Distance or anything like that? No, I, I, as I, I've only played the one that was on PSP and Lords of Shadow. Now, like those are the ones I know for sure. Oh, I those played. are the only Castlevania games you played. Period. Yeah. Oh, I just got know, the remaster like, on PS4 before. that I, I dabbled with, which I liked. But then it's like that's it. You're missing out on some classic games, man. You got to play. Uh, you should get like if they have it on Virtual Console, get Super Castlevania Four. That's right. another magic piece right there. I, but, I heard a lot that, about that. That game is like, and this is why I have a problem with the term Metroidvania. Because Castlevania wasn't really like that until Symphony of the Night. Like, a lot of people would argue that Castlevania 2 was like that, but it was like a goofy, like, not really the same. Like, it's not really as satisfying. Like, you go around towns, like, trying to buy items that help you unlock things, but it's not the same as, like... Because, like, Metroid is, like, you find an ability, and it now lets you explore the, the level differently. So it's like, you'll see something, you'll be like, why can't I get up there? And then And then you'll find an item... That you're like, oh, I know where I need to go to use this, and that's what makes those game these games so brilliant. Which is what I'm expecting, yeah, uh, Ritual of Night to be like, where it's like, like that type of Metroid style, where you're like, I don't have all the abilities yet, and but let me go find things out, and then you're like, oh shit, I can now get to this area because I have like a double jump for let's say, yeah. Um, so that's what makes these games so fun because you start to learn the map. So you like you learn the map and then you start unlocking abilities that allow you to to further explore the map. So it's fun. And it's what's really fun is in this is what I love about Symphony of the Night. At the first part of the game, like after you do the the prologue where you fight Dracula, um you have all the powers in the game. Right? Oh, so you yeah, eat through and you're just murdering everyone and it's like the easiest thing ever. You're like this game fucking rules. And then the reaper comes he's like, "Actually go fuck yourself." And then he takes everything from you and then you have to relearn everything i i played i i played that one i think uh or yeah. or one of them That's like they, the uh-huh oh yeah card. so I, I do that i was like oh yeah this game rules i loved it oh man and then i played the beginning like oh oh and it it hit me it's like oh i'm probably badass because of that like it, it hit me because i i have played metroid prime and they do the same shit where it's like oh you have all these abilities and they take them away from you but uh I was playing this. I was like, "Oh, it's it's good, of course." Like I I I re I just it's like, "Oh, it's it's Castlevania, of course." Oh wait, so this happened? Did this happen in Bloodstained or in no? In um, it was the one that was uh, that they remastered on PS4. Uh, it was in the I Dracula remember. collection. I like you start off like you the first you just start off fighting Dracula in the beginning, and it's like, "Oh, yeah. you know, whatever." Then and then it, it falls right after that, and it's like, "Oh, now you're going through another castle or whatever." Uh, and that yeah, one, was, now, yeah. Right? So it's like you, they give you all the because it's kind of is I think it ends where the first where the game before it ends like it begins where the first one ends pretty right. much. Exactly. So like it kind of it serves as a uh, catch up. Like oh, this is what happens. This guy fought, fought Dracula and all that. So it's yeah. like okay, so you have all these cool possibilities, and then it's like oh, well no no you got to go back. It's like oh okay like, but with this they don't they don't do that. But you do start off like. You need to get your ability, like you get abilities as you go on. So you uh, start with the whole time. Yeah, like because it also teaches you about the about these abilities you get and how you get them. Because the way, you, like it, it's way more like intricate now because there's a whole menu system. You have to get armor, uh, a weapon, and all this stuff they don't even give you. Like they give you bullshit at the beginning. Wait, how much? How much have you played of? I've never played Rondo of Blood or Dracula X. How much have you played of Symphony of the Night? You haven't got that far because this sounds I, exactly I think, like Symphony of the Night. Symphony. I think I made it to the first boss and then I got bodied and then because I was streaming, I was streaming this game and I was like, okay, this is this is great, yay! Woo. And then uh, because it was like I was doing it for like a Halloween thing and then uh, I ended. I I did. I got my ass kicked. I was like, all right, well, I I'm I need to go to bed, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end the stream and then I never like went back to it because I was. Because at the same time, I also realized I, you know, a year bef a year ago or so, I kind of promised to do a Persona Three and Persona Four. So I was like, I should probably go back to Persona Three because I I took a nearly a year off from playing that game. So I was like, I, I should get back to that and, and kind of work my way through. So I did that, and then, and then I never really thought of playing Dracula Dracula again or Castlevania. 
But that one I do want to I do want to go back to is just I I just was playing too many other games. You can't give up on Bloodstained. We have to beat it. We yeah, have to beat it together. I I had a friend that kept telling me, uh, so uh, did you play Bloodstained? I was like, uh, uh, no. I I was playing um, I'm playing Wait, why Yakuza. Are they on the call too? Huh? Oh, they already beat it. Huh? Yeah, they already they already beat it, and uh, he okay. he's a little bit busy, but uh. So I, I, I just kind of sat, had sat there because the one thing that is weird about uh, Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night, is it's very floaty a little bit. Like, it, like the combat feels, like, it feels satisfying, like, when you get a hit in and all that, but it's, like, it's very, um, you kind of feel like there's no gravity, almost. Like, you kind of feel like you're on the moon, and you're just kind of, like, floating around a little bit with some jumps, but, uh... It, is that, do you think that's on purpose? Like, yeah, I, I think main character she's a witch is that what that is or did i make she, that up close i mean she's not because she's not human she, i think she's like a demon because she has like horns and okay. the way she gets like her abilities like these shards that go right into her so maybe maybe it's maybe she's supposed to be floaty yeah I, th I think it i also think it depends on like the weapon you use oh uh, like mm -hmm. because i you could get a dagger that's like very quick you get like slow moving attacks and all this stuff the only part I made it to in Bloodstained before I kind of, like, dropped it was, uh, I was in this, like, mansion house thing, and I, I got lost, and I was like, I don't know where I'm going, and I kind of stopped, because I, I was like, I'm dying all the time now, There, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm getting exhausted, like, like, um, I don't play a lot of games, like, for extensive time, I only play, like, maybe, like, two hours at most, uh, otherwise, it's like, it gets to the point where I'm like, uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting kind of like, I'm, it's like I'm falling asleep almost. Like I'm kind of going into this like daydreaming kind of state. And it's like I, I'm gonna go nowhere. I'm gonna keep dying, fucking up, and all this stuff. So it's like, I Wait dropped it. And you do five hour stream. When I do a five hour stream, I'm talking to people. Like I'm not doing by myself. Like I don't game for five hours. All right. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> point taken. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so this is going to be interesting um it's funny talking about your other experience like i wonder if you've beaten any like metroidvania type games have you beaten no like, i hollow knight i uh, started hollow knight recently and I, and I liked it and then i that's another game i kind of like just dropped it because I, because a lot of times i i would start a new game and I would, I would feel instantly bad about these other games i started and they just dropped and i was like i need to go back to these games like I'm already like longing to go back to um Yakuza Five because uh -huh. that that's a game I liked and it's like I don't want to get to the point to a point where it's like I forget what happens because like yeah. I remember the story still but it's like I don't want to be like let's boot up because that happened to me with Yakuza One I dropped it for a long time I went back and was like wait what am I doing what's what what am I supposed to be doing what's the point here what 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 well, who's this character again like. And it was, like, rough. I have to say, I've been playing through Yakuza. It's a game I've been wanting to play for a long time. And I finally played Yakuza 0. I loved it. Yeah, that, that one... Uh, but everyone since then, I'm like, eh. It, like, Yakuza 0 was really good. And then, like, like for instance, so in Yakuza 0, there's that whole relationship between him and, uh, like, Kiru and... Uh, what's Majima? his buddy's name? Majima or Majima or or uh, Natishi, whatever. What's the name? Nichiki. 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 Okay, yeah. So like you see their whole friendship develop and all the stuff, and you're like, oh yeah, I get the this guy. These guys are buddies, whatever, right? And it's like, I'm gonna go into spoiler territory, but whatever. That's so, an old game. Yeah. So there's all these characters in this whole subplot of like that real estate thing and oh. like Tachibana and all those oh, people, man. and you're like, huh. This is interesting. I wonder how they're like setting this up to be like part of the the greater game universe. And then come to find out in the last like two hours of the game, everyone dies. They just <laughs> that's, kill all of those characters. That's literally Yakuza. Because like yeah. I, you know, it, it's funny because I, I, I only heard of Yakuza th like through uh you know Mega64 through their podcast, and and one of them was saying like they compared to comfort food, where it's like you don't have to play all of them in order or all in at once. You can just kind of go out of order and it'll be fine, whatever. And it's like, I mean, the first game, I mean, I didn't even beat Zero. I started Zero, never beat it at the time. I started one, 
dropped it, and then I, I played six, and I beat six, and I was like, and I was able to understand six fine. I mean, I, like I was like, I six also came with like a um a summary of all the games. I only read the summary for like three. And I, I, I stopped caring about reading. <laughs> I was like, uh, you know, because I said, I was like, I know I'm going to read a lot in six. And I was like, I don't want to read more. I'm just going to play the game at this point. So I played it and, and it pissed me off even more because in six, they recap this stuff anyway. And I was like, what's the fucking point? Because it goes to the point where like, Kiryu's like in a dream sequence and it's like, and you walk around. Yeah. You talk to this one character. like, this guy I knew from this time, and he did this for me, and he was cool. I was like, why the <laughs> fuck did I read the fucking summary for 3? Uh, but it still pays off to play the games all the same, but I kind of take breaks from them. Yeah. But uh, the, the, whole, the whole point for me, like, with, like, Bloodstain and all this stuff, like, I... I only played the N64 when I was a kid, and I was, like, a diehard Nintendo fan. Like, I didn't want to touch PlayStation and all this. I, like, I, I, I was so close-minded. I would go to GameStop, and I would see the, the uh, PlayStation controls. Like, who would like this? This makes no sense. Square? X? Circle? This is, like, stupid. What's wrong with A and B? Simple. And it's like... <laughs> like, that, like, yeah, this is dumb. The N64 controller might be one of the worst design controllers ever well like, why is there a d-pad on an island for some hey reason? hey design wise i agree it was dumb at the time i i would not defend the the design of like this the controller but none of the games used it it was like oh just use a stick and the a and b's and see seldomly what? What? seldomly some games would be dumb enough to be like oh use the l button over here but, but it's, it's exactly but it's like this is not it's not even available to you like there's great use of, of, of games with where you use the D-pad for, like, inventory or yeah. whatever. We've just completely... You know what? Fuck the D-pad. <laughs> Excuse me? I love the D-pad. Yeah. It get when you're not playing a game with 360-degree uh, movement, it's like, you need a D-pad. Yeah. Right? You know, it's funny It's funny because uh, Mario 64 DS works fine on the DS. But when... Uh, like, since the 3DS is backwards compatible with with DS games, you pop it in, and it plays so fucking bad. Like, because it, wow. the way that it's programmed to move, it's programmed assuming that you, can, you have only four directions. Because it's it's a fucking D-pad. So it kind of programmed for that. The joy, the um, the knob has way more degrees. Oh, it work. Yeah, so, like, Mario will just be spinning like crazy sometimes. It, it, it is crazy. It is so unplayable, and it's like I don't, I don't want to play this. Like it's it interesting, the they game. Didn't, like figure out a patch for that. It, it's kind of like you know how there's arcade machines, and they have the, the like the, the 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 stick with the ball on it. Yeah, those only go in four directions. So like if you go to a Pac-Man machine, it's only a four dir direction joystick. But if you ever see one of those big like multi cades that has like an eight way joystick. Oh yeah, it like doesn't work when you play Pac-Man because you have to make sure you get. Only the you can't do diagonals. Yeah, like not work. Yeah, so it's funny. That's like kind of the same problem. Like I mean, I even thought that with the GameCube controller. I was like, oh man, the GameCube controller makes so much sense. Whatever. But um, <laughs> controller stinks too. It's worse than the N sixty four. Don't let don't let melee players hear that. Whatever. Fuck. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna tell you they right. need to keep it in the in Switch two. And they the new Switch. They gotta have GameCube ports. So but, um, complaints with you. But anyways. <laughs> Uh, like, at that point with GameCube, my brother wanted the PS2 because he wanted to play Kingdom Hearts because of, you know, Disney characters, whatever. Uh, so that was when I was like, oh, PS2, okay, now, now, now it's cool. Now I, I accepted it because I, I, I started playing it. I got around to it. I realized I was being very fucking stupid, okay? I mean, when you're a kid, you do dumb shit, but, uh, I was playing, I think at that time I was playing, like, dumb PS2 games, like, like I was playing Tekken Tag on it, and I was like, "Oh, Tekken Tag is so great!" I, but I didn't get it at all. Like I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what the fuck, like what mode I was playing. It was, it it was it was a, a fever dream at this point. I was playing PS2 games. I then tried out Metal Gear Solid Three. I rented it from Blockbuster with a fr with um you with Craig, uh, another friend I used to have in high school. I used to hang out with. I rented. Uh, MGS3 there, and I didn't understand MGS either. I was top down, all this stuff, and I was like, 
Oh, that I'm, was the first. Was it the first one you played? Was three? Yeah. And, no way. And I uh, remember that's why, that's why we we started talking about Metal Gear Solid in high school. Yeah. Oh, so well, like because around that time, from early days. Yeah. It my 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 fandom for Metal Gear it it, it like wrecks people when I tell them why I got into it, but. Uh, the very first time I played 3, the very first time, I pop it in, I'm like, oh, cool. I didn't understand why the fuck Circle was accept and X was back. That was, like, weird. And then, like, the very beginning, when you're going through the jungle, I got lost. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, where am I going? I don't know where, where, what I'm doing. What's the point? And, I, like, I got the backpack. Uh, and then I stayed in that area for the longest time going around. I was like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm, I don't know where, I, what, anything. And I, and I can't, I can't even tell you what the fuck I was doing because I swear I, I was going, I was running in circles. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I then went to the alligator place oh, these, with the quicksand, died there. I was like, okay, whatever. Like, unlike some people, I knew why I died. I was like, oh, it's quicksand. I knew it was quicksand, but I just stood there like thinking to myself, what, what do I do? And then it was like, by the time I, because I was walking around the quicksand. And I died just by doing that. Uh, so I was like, fuck this game. I rejected it and returned to Blockbuster, not ever wanting to touch it. And I should also add, I rented it without even knowing the title of the game. I looked at the cover, I was like, oh man, this looks cool. I'll try this out. And, and the game sucked uh, at that time. What got me into Metal Gear was, uh, so I got a PSP when it came out. I got Metal Gear Acid. And I was playing that, and I was like, oh, this... I hate... I did not like the game at first, but I liked the characters that were in it. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Oh, man, this... What what game are are these from? And I was like, oh, Metal Gear Solid. And that got me into it. And then, story-wise, it was... It, it, it's hilarious to me. I, I always think back to this, where I thought the, all of these games were the same. Like, I thought they were all the same characters. So, like, I would see Ocelot in 3... And I was like, wait, why, wait, in one he has a mustache and he loses a hand. How come in three he's, he's, he looks so different? What? And then I realized, oh, it's a prequel. Okay. But wait, Snake loses an eye. Why does he have, an, why does he have two eyes? Like, like it was so gonzo how I was like. Was so confused. Yeah. But it was like. I, it wasn't even like the story was confused. I, I don't know. My, my brain was like fucking on another planet. I don't know. I just don't understand how I got confused. I, I kept playing it. I was like, oh, of course. It, th these games are this time part of the timeline. This is that. This is that. Snake is big boss in three and it's like, oh, now it makes sense. It all comes together. So, yeah. with that, I, uh, I played Final Fantasy X as well and I hated it because I didn't understand that PlayStation 2 had, like, the greatest fucking release in, like, 2001. They had Metal Gear Solid 2 came out, Final Fantasy X, um, I think Ninja Gaiden came... No, not Ninja Gaiden. Um, the Devil like, Cry? Like, a million amazing games came out in 2001, and I'm like, how did they even do that? Yeah. It's crazy how many good games there were. And now it's Another like, you gotta pray that they get something. Like, I, I think, especially with this console generation they learned that like you know the best way to do it now is to ease people to upgrade like okay you know you're gonna have games that are gonna be on ps4 and ps5 and that'll be like that for a while and then you'll have to buy a ps5 later on like it's gonna it's to warm you up to get it and i do like that and i think it's better now where it's like oh you buy this game you get an upgrade with it to the ps5 like yakuza like a dragon does that like you buy that game they give you the upgrade for free and it's like right, this is right. what they should be doing. Like, and like MGS Five came comes out. They don't. They didn't upgrade it for you. The only game that did that was Hotline Miami. Hotline Miami was the only <laughs> like game that gave you the PS4 version with it. And Skullgirl. Well, no, Skullgirl Second Encore did that. It's like, oh, you buy it on Vita. You buy. You have the PS4 version too. Like you get two two copies for the price of one. Yeah. Which is like which nice, but I have to say this. Sorry, because we were talking about. Um, Metal Gear Solid and how Kojima was just like, fuck it, I guess I'll just make more games to tie up loose ends. Hotline Miami 2 was genius for that. 
Yeah, you know, I, did you play Hotline Miami too? I played, I played both. Yeah, I love, I love it. Like, I love how the story is told. The point, just... But the whole point of the game for Hotline Miami two was like, here's the answers, idiots. It does nothing. You know what I mean? It's like there's no point in having any of the answers. Yeah, and it kind of gives you like a, like a middle finger at the end too because it ends with a um an atom bomb. Like, oh, right. But I do like that it also contextualizes, uh, one like because you go to the uh the, to that Seven Eleven. Every right. time, and it gets way weird each time, and yeah. it, you're like, "What's the point?" And then it's like, "Oh no, this is, he's hallucinating this." It's like, "Oh wow!" Like, it, it's not like, "Oh, it it means nothing in a way that's like, fuck, fuck this game." It's more like it means nothing in a in a good way. Like, it's like, "Oh, you know," it, it, it makes you like appreciate both both the but games. But that's 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 what I'm saying is like their whole point was there's no point to us answering these questions because the game, the first game is just what it is. It's just like, it's your interpretation of it. It's like, you don't need answers. It's like, okay, here's the answers and then blow everything up. It's kind, it's <laughs> kind of like, uh, it's kind of like Ava uh, as well. Uh, you, I, I doubt you stuck with it after I showed you like one or two episodes of, of that show. Um, oh, I haven't, yeah, I haven't watched it since. Yeah. But it is, it is very interesting. Yeah. I haven't, it's fun. It it's funny because at the end, the, they did a, a fine like the show ends and the show ends on like everyone hated it because it was like what the fuck is this ending? Because it ends with like it gets so fucking cerebral and fucked up, weird because like like because the beginning of it's like okay it's monster of the week kind of ep structure almost and it has like whatever story. The development got fucked up because of um there was like a terrorist attack during the development of it like there was a uh, that subway bomb thing in um the 90s that happened in japan and that kind of uh disrupted the the development the creator suffered depression so he changed the story to be like okay now the main character is gonna be like an introspection of him he's gonna have to come to terms that he sucks and he needs to and he could be better if he wanted to he just decides to be a bitch like it, it goes into this like whole like thing about it and everyone hated it because it just it ends with him just being in a room and it does, and it's clear that they didn't finish it. it. The animation devolves to like white piece of paper and like an outline of, of like, the main character just walking like this. And it's like, yeah, see that that's you walking. You you have an outline now. See, you can make any parameter you want. It's like, okay, like it has a meaning to it, but it's like <laughs> it just changes the uh the what was promised at episode one immediately. <laughs> like, and then they did a movie. How, how many how many episodes is it? It's twenty five or twenty six. Oh, really? So it's short. Yeah, but the okay, movie to, they I did a movie watch. as well, where the movie he he uh, made this movie because everyone hated. They did a movie before it, which was like a recap movie, which sucked. No one liked it, so so he did this movie out of spite, pretty much, and it it gets to the point where one of the scenes in the movie, he puts all of the death threats he, he received in the movie, and it was like, look at this. And it, was just like, it was like for a flash, oh like, a, like a, a quick second, it just flashes, and it's like, yeah, it's death threats to him. It's, like, there's a scene where they show like the movie theater where they showed the movie, they showed all these people that were there, it's like, yeah, see, this is, this is the world without you in it. And it's like, oh, shit. But it was... That's when you know you made it when you get death threats. Yeah, and and it got it got to the point where the the creator said I didn't know how to end the movie, so he so I decided to tell him how to end the movie pretty much, and this ends with everyone dying. <laughs> like it ends with the main character de deciding because it, because the main character is given a choice of like what do you want, what do you wish for, what do you wish to happen. Like he gets his fucking massive power, whatever, and he's like, you know what, these people are fucking assholes. They're mean to me. Fuck him. Fuck humanity. He decides to reject humanity and he kills everyone. <laughs> so it ends with everyone dying. It's like, oh, okay. I'm with it. Wait so, a second. I just realized we got so far off topic. Yeah. Yeah, I know. This is what happens. This is what happens. Like, we get derailed by... <laughs> All right. So maybe we should... Okay. Let's talk about what we're going to do as far as playing. Right? Yeah. So... Um, I, I, could, I, could edit, I could edit that out and put it in, like, a separate reel... <laughs> Uh, you know, I'll I'll I mean, do whatever. I'll I'll decide. Yeah, it's fucking. It's it. It doesn't matter. We're discussing yeah. whatever we discuss. And this and this is like the first episode where we had like a, another person on too. It's not like you know, no show is no, perfect. I mean, I mean, it's fine. It's yeah. It's, it's all about the discussion around it. Somehow we went from Castlevania to fucking 
Evangelical. What is it? How do you say it? Oh, uh, I just I say Eva. Just be it's short. short. Like. Um, but fuck it. But let's talk about this. What are the rules of this? Um, I think we should somehow like cap our progress, right? So like maybe we play like three hours worth or so. I, I looked it up on how long to beat and they say it takes like 13 hours to beat the game. Yeah. So maybe we do like three or four hours of progress and then we'll meet back up no matter how far either of us got. Uh, Cause like if we want people else to play along. Well, I, th- I, th- I think if other people want to play along, they could go at w- whatever pace uh, because I mean, because these videos are just going to be between like you and me to begin with. Fair enough. So I think what, what it should just be is like either a, a week's time, whatever progress well, we, made, yeah. we made. Like Yeah, we should definitely meet every week. Yeah. And then we yeah. just do do a video on that and then talk about our progress. I think because I think it would be interesting as well. Like maybe, you know, we don't cap the prog- progress because maybe like if if we're playing it, like we could see like how better one of us are or worse each of us are. Like it'll sh- it'll showcase like, you know, you know, the You'll get they'll get two opinions. One person who might who had a predisposition to Castlevania, and one that's like, yeah, this is like my first experience with it, and it's hey, that's a fair point. So that's what I liked about um, like Persona when I first started. Like when I first started Persona Five, I never played a turn based game because I thought they were dumb. It's like why would I take turns beating people up? Like why why go through menus? Yeah, like that's that's why I I dro- I dropped that game. I was like, why why would I want to do this? And then I saw the fucking sports game, the blitz ball. I fucking throw it. And I was like, okay, that's a love letter to kill it to kill it. Like it's just, no, but um, uh, wow. I, I I don't like forced sports games. Force forced sports did you games. What what do you say? Final Fantasy X is one of my favorite games ever. By the way. Oh oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, oh, those, death, those death threats are coming, buddy. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> well, you know what? I like Persona Five, and everyone dunks on that game every day, so it's it's all it's all good. I, like, I mean, I like Skull Girls as well, and that's another game that's like minimal. But what? Anyways, anyways, I'm just fucking with yeah. Uh, you know, I played Persona Five without any experience with turn-based games, and I kind of I liked it a lot because it was like, oh. I, because it kind of gets you in the in the in the mindset of like those kind of games. Like it has jazzy music. It's like the menus are like very like, um, you know, in Persona Four Golden, for example, like you could see like a little bit of like them experimenting with the UI. Like, oh, we're gonna make it like more pop out a little bit more instead of just a plain menu. Three had a very plain menu. It's like, oh, okay, a wheel, rectangle menu. Okay, like four was like, okay. You're gonna have like this weird like organization of stuff, and five pushed it even more. But it you know it gets you in the groove of like okay, I should do this now or that later, or whatever. So so like with that, I'm excited to play Bloodstained Ritual of the Night because I never played a game like that. Like honestly, because I played it like I'm lost. I I'm done. I the second I get lost is just I don't I don't want to waste my time. I was gonna say. I'm a little bit worried you're just gonna quit. Well, if but maybe, maybe this will help us because if you get stuck, and I'm past it, I can be like, okay, this is what you might be able to do. And yeah, maybe I can help you get unstuck. Yeah, like, <laughs> and I think like you know if, but I also think if I get, if I have like a drive or a motivation to do it, I'll I'll just do it because I because like with Persona Five for example, like I I wanted to participate in the discussion of like the story online with it, so it's like I have to beat it. I have I have to like kind of get to the end to see where it goes, uh, and that's that's what got me through that. Then I played uh, so so with this looks like it, you know if I'm doing a video series on it, I do want to I do want to beat it. Like I've right, done well, then you're locked in, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, like it's it's funny because I like uh, I kind of started this this um the original game club videos because I was watching a movie club uh, podcast every week. And it's like, you know, this it's kind of like, it's kind of like they, they even mentioned like they wouldn't watch these movies otherwise. So like doing a movie club, like I'll, you know, help them watch a movie that they wouldn't see otherwise. And they either have a new appreciation or whatever with it. So like that's yeah. so, you know, it's, it's nice to have like a, um, something to talk about to work for. Yeah. I've been, I've been wanting to do something like this for a while, because I always play some random game and I just want to shit talk it or like, or praise it 
and I have no one to talk about it with. So yeah. this will be a perfect. Like before this, before this recording, I'll, I trashed Persona Four for like forty five minutes because I hate it. I, I want, again send your comments to Theo if you care, but I fucking hate it. I honestly <laughs> feel like I might be on the same page because even when I was streaming, I was telling people in me like I don't think I'm gonna like this game by the end. I because there was stuff in it in the very first dungeon I was playing. I was like I, there were just things that were pissing me off off the bat like. I mean, I told you in the, in, the, in, in the discussion before, like, the fucking Arcana, the bonus Arcana that the game gives you is, like, it's either really good, it's like, oh, you'll get, like, bonus strength, or you will get, like, you can learn a good move. Uh, your person will learn something brand new that's great, or whatever, like, some bullshit mm -hmm. like that. But then it'll give you, like, oh, here's the Death Arcane, oh, it's upside down, well, pff, your SP meter's gone, but your HP will be full. You can't go on in the dungeon, so we gotta kick you out. And there's no checkpoint where you are, so you have to go through all that again. And it's just like th that was just like driving me up the wall. And the combat, I I hated that. Like, even if you exploit the weakness, they could still get up and and um take you out. And I just hate Teddy. I, I hate him. He could go away, uh, and I wouldn't miss oh him. My. Oh, here's something we didn't talk about. So it's interesting that you talk about that, like kicking you out of the dungeon thing. Because that, that would only annoy me because it's so easy. Like, once you level up past a certain level, and maybe Golden's just a lot easier. But, like, if I had to start at the beginning of the dungeon, it's just like, okay, this is just an exercise in tedium. Because all I do is press Y, and then I'm just yeah. doing the basic, the rush but, attack. But it was just... You know what I'm talking about? It wasn't, it wasn't even like, oh, I got kicked out. It was like, I got kicked out with no SP. <laughs> so, like, you, I could go back, sure, but it's like... I'm gonna be doing no damage at all, like because like yeah. you're 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 forced to be physical, so it's like I can't heal if I need to unless I have items, and the items three and four are very stingy with items. They give you like such weak healing. It's like oh, here you can heal fifty, I guess. Yeah. And it's like oh, guess. okay, cool. Yeah. And then in five, but in five, it's like oh, here here you could revive, you could do this, you could do that, and it's like oh, okay, like ah. Oh, it's just, yeah, it, there's two schools of thought with it because three, like every time you go back to the lobby, they auto re regen your HP and SP. Like if you go back to the lobby, they give you your HP and SP back, so you could always grind back. The only balance with that is that the you have an emotion system where it's like if your party's feeling bad or sick, they'll be more susceptible to cr getting critical by the enemy. Like they'll just be fucking worthless. Uh, yeah. Or if you grind a lot, like a long time, party members will say. I'm getting sleepy, I'm gonna leave. And then they leave, and then it's like, oh, so now you're down with two party members instead of four? Like, you'll, you'll, yeah. your party members will just start leaving left and right if you just kind of keep grinding. Which is like, it's nice because it does kind of incentivize more balance with the S links and, um, grinding. Four is just, fuck you. Like, it's like, oh, okay, like. <laughs> Like it does Wait, away with it, the with the emotion system, which is like, I guess that's okay because it is a little frustrating if you need to grind. Like I was grinding for Satan in uh in three, and time was running out before the final boss fight, so I was like, I need to get this done now. Party members were getting sick and tired left and right, and I was like, dude, I need to get, I just need to be level seventy nine. And if all my because like if they're sick or they get tired during a uh, expedition in Tartarus, they'll be sick for that week or whatever. So it's like, if I start the final boss and they're fucking tired or whatever, it's gonna they're be just dead. It, yeah, it's gonna be even harder because like they they'll miss more often, they'll get hit more often. It's like, so I I it's like I I gotta hope for the best, and it, it worked out because I think I think in three they don't allow your party to be to be bad, um for for those boss fights because those are story those are story portions. So I I think they they do want at least you to progress. I guess, but yeah, it was still like nerve wracking. Is, is Teddy a party member for your for you? In I think he's gonna start to become a party member because I think when you okay. start the game, he isn't, and then once you get okay. Risei, he becomes a party member. Uh, well, okay, you've seen the anime, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. more Persona Four spoilers, but do, do they do the same thing with Teddy in the anime? Does he like integrate with the real world? Yeah. Somehow. Yeah, the the story is one to one the same between the anime and the, the only difference with the anime is that they uh give the main character a a, a 
They gave him these. Uh, they gave him dialogue. Right. Uh, that's the, like, okay. the only difference. So, what the fuck is the deal with Teddy like manifesting a body? Like, like it just the story is so dumb because everyone's just like, "This is normal." Like he just all of a sudden is a is a human being. Everyone's like, well, "Okay, that's fine." Well, I and think he just, like, lives in, in Yosuke's house. What the fuck is that? I it just didn't make any sense. I think what it is that is is just like when you're in the TV world, your his presence is different, and then when he's in the real world, it, it just manifests as him being a person to fit in. Like, but but it's like. But he's like, I just live at Yosuke's house now, and everyone's just like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I, I, tell I think I think the I think the, the I think the logistics don't make sense. A lot of Persona <laughs> games, like I to, see in in five, they do a better job with this because uh, the the cat thing that that talks to you in Persona Five, when he's in the real world, he's a real cat. So like when you go back to your place, it's just told like. I found this cat. He's a stray cat. I want to take care of him. And and Soju was like, "If you want to take care of the cat, fine. But he better not show up at the cafe. Keep him in your room." And it's like, oh, okay. Like, at least it's like, I mean, at least it's like, okay, it makes sense. Like, okay, the the yeah, uh, guardian knows, and the guardian's like, yeah, keep the cat. Yeah, that makes but, way more sense. Yeah, Teddy's I, just like, hey, I'm a mascot character, and also I have a human body, and like. You'll see in the game. Yeah. I don't know if it's different from the anime. When he gets introduced as a human, it's the most bizarre thing, and they're just all like, "Yeah, this is this is normal." I'm like, "No, it's fucking not." <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're that... you go on a TV and you're acting like it's just regular life. <laughs> uh, it's it's funny because with uh, even Persona Five and Strikers, to a point, it's like they have to talk about like when so something ha like whatever happens to the cognitive world in Five, it affects the real world. So like if like they, they talk about like if they change the heart of of the palace of the main of the ba of the bad guy they change the heart and if it doesn't change or whatever the main character the guy could die he could go through a mental shutdown you know whatever shit can happen so like it ha so like they they know they they built they beat this one boss and they're like yeah he changed his heart okay let's go home guys they they leave but there's there's like another character another like hidden enemy in five that kills the, the boss character so it causes a mental shutdown so they see this they're like wait but why did he have a mental shutdown we didn't do it what's going on we must have done it and it's like you have done this like for 10 like five different people all the same and they didn't die this one person died you don't think maybe maybe Was something different, maybe? yeah and then like in the second boss fight that that guy tells you that there's a guy there's another a character like this is he you bring the second boss character down to his knees he's ready to change his heart and he says oh uh you're not like he mentions this guy in a black mask in in it and it's like and they're like what a black mask there's another person coming to these palaces than us and they're like yeah we gotta figure out who that is the third boss mentions them again like oh yeah this guy that guy the guy in the black mask he doesn't give a shit he's he's gonna fuck you up if he knows you're doing shit and they're like Wow, we gotta figure this out. So then, when that happens in the story, they're like, "Whoa, did we do that?" It's like, you don't think maybe the fucking black the mask guy was there? Like, like yeah. it's it's All stuff right. like that. But All right. let's stop trashing Persona because, <laughs> and I really want to get started on Bloodstain. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. How do we end this? Uh, one thing I wanted to ask, and maybe you don't, maybe you don't know this, maybe you do know this. Did the director of Castlevania, did he leave Konami on bad terms? Or was he just like, I'm done and I'm doing I it. honestly don't know because that probably happened if it were to, if it did happen, probably when I wasn't even like care Fantastic. caring. Yeah. yeah. Because I mean the same thing that happened with like uh, the Mega Man guy, and it's like I didn't know his oh, yeah, story he, either. He fucking hated them. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then like now he like it's it, it's rough. It's something. Like a lot of these, and I also feel like a lot of these development stories is is whatever. Like the only one I and I didn't even know this about Suda Fifty One. He had, he also had issues with, with uh, publishers. Like, uh, really? Yeah, it's it's funny because like he during Shadows of the Damned, he 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 said like he hated working with EA because EA like the whole game was supposed to be like you're a guy um, going through a castle and you're supposed to be talking to these town these town keeps these um, shop keeps. They get um, clothing, they get stuff like, you're going to be like a peasant pretty much at the beginning and you'd work your way up. 
and all this stuff. That, like, it would not be focused on action at all. And EA was like, tell was telling him, no, you you should make it an action game. Resident Evil Four is big right now, so you need to make it like that. So it he, they and every time he he would pitch something about the game, they're like, nah, no, we're not, no, not doing this. Nah, and not he, an over the shoulder shooter. Yeah, like <laughs> and like he was and it was also like a co- a collab with uh, Shinji Mikami. Like Suda Fifty One and Shinji Mikami were working together with on that on it, and they were both like, yeah, this kind of so like. It got to the point where Suda was about to just give up on game development at that point. And then he made other games afterwards. He And Killer is Dead had issues. Like, the uh, publisher wanted him to add in all these sexual fan service things. Like, the uh, Gigolo mode was, like, not his intent. And the, the the publisher said, you need to put this in. Because our customers love this shit. You need to put it in. And he was, like, t- saying to, like, a lot of interviews saying, like, I'm very nervous that people are going to have the wrong idea of what Grasshopper Manufacturer is about. They're going to think that we're just about sex all the time, and that's not what we're about. So, yeah. if you play um, No More Heroes, Travis Strikes Again, there's a literal section in that story where it he pretty much self-inserts himself in that game. Because there's a character that was supposed to be making a game, a game console. The government takes over that project and makes that project into something else, and she's like... I was gonna make a game, and they made it this way. Fuck this, and all this stuff. Like, it was this whole like passion of like Suda's career in it. Like, he throws in all his characters in that game. Like, he throws in uh, Killer Seven. Like, Batman is like connected to Killer Seven to a point. They throw in like Silver Case, all this stuff. Uh, they even he even throws in a, a a little story with Shadows of the Damned in it. Like, oh yeah, like Shadow of the Damned is here. Like, it's he made a, a sequel to that game. And so it, weird. It, it's it's but, it's wild. Like it ends with him like having this bittersweet notion. Of, like you might have these moments of like these lows with with companies, but you will always be able to to find other highs. Like it's just these these things might might be one of those things that has to happen for you to improve as a developer. Because it, because with that after that all those instances, he was like, I don't want to make any more big pro, big budget games. I want to go back to being indie or small scale and. Yeah. Like he, that's why he collaborated a lot with um, Devolver with yeah, with this game. That, like that was actually that's what he was saying when I saw him at PAX West in like 2018. Yeah, and that, he was it was him and Swery, um, and he was ma- Swery was making that like Deadly Premonition two, I think. The one with the dogs or something. Oh, oh you talked. To oh, the good life. Dogs. Yeah. Okay. You know, you know, not living, uh, talking dogs or something. I think so. Yeah, I think it's like. I think I don't it's, remember what it was called. Yeah. But they had a panel, and he was basically like, "I don't want to fuck with any of this like big budget stuff anymore. I'm just doing indie." Yeah, and like yeah. that, you know, they even throw like Hollow Miami references in. Uh, yeah. In this game. Like, and that's where like a lot of people shat on Travis Strokes again because it's not a traditional No More Heroes game. It's not like oh, it's hack and such. It's like top down, like indie, like shooter kind of gameplay almost and each each game world you go in has a different gimmick each time like it's i like it is it's 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 very like personable almost like it's very personal the whole like visual novel with it it's like so like it, it's a game that i think is completely underappreciated like the story is so what, so what did it come out for it came out on the switch but they did port it on the pc and ps4 but uh the I'm not gonna that. yeah the only thing is that like the switch version is the definitive version like but uh, I think the Steam version is the, is the second best. I think the PS4 one is like, no, skip well, that. What, they, what changed? What what's wrong with it? Oh, uh, I think it's just the frame rate is really bad. Like it just does, it like it, it, a lot of stuff, like it's just I, I don't know. Like it just immediately I, I just kept hearing like oh just don't don't bother on the PS4 because I think it crashes a lot too. Like it has all these weird bugs in it because it was not ported like with it was ported with another company. But uh, I'll, I'll have to check it out and see if it's worth buying. The Steam version does have all the DLC as well that they did for that, and the DLC is really good. Like they have a they add another story to Batman where it explains like his story and it ties into No More Heroes One. Like it's like oh the all of the fights that were going on in No More Heroes One were all recorded anyway. Like they were all like the, it kind of paints like the world of of No More Heroes a little bit better, but it also hypes up three as well that's coming out. But it, it's it's. I do like that one of the mini games that they throw in, the boss character blatantly says, like, 
why should why should I don't care this this game sucks no one's gonna care because I'm DLC and they're not gonna like who's who cares about DLC characters really like all the gamers out there that bought this game, they're probably not even gonna know I'm here. They're like, it's like the game, the character itself is pissed off that no one's gonna know know its existence. That's hilarious. So it's yeah, like cool meta. It All right, so we're gonna play Bloodstained, and yes. hopefully next time we actually talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh hell yeah! Like let's maybe, maybe like we'll probably have like more to talk about too because like we, I mean, with impressions is like how far can you go like. I mean, what are you expecting out of Bloodstained? Yeah, all, all I know is that it's kind of like Castlevania Symphony of the Night. That's the only thing I know. So Yeah, the art, the art style is nice, though. And all, I, and all I know is that you fucking suck at those games. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> so next time be like, I did the tutorial. I'm done. <laughs> I, I did want to get back to it. It's just I, I got preoccupied with so many other games. So it's like... I'll, I'll just, I, I don't know, it's, it's I, I just get, like, so bogged down with other games. Like, it's just, it's because, like, I also started Hellblade as well, and I, I'm liking that game, but it's like, I, I dropped that, too, for a while. Like, I made, I made it to Hell, and then it's like, oh, cool. But that game is so exhausting sometimes, because it's so, like, visually intensive. Because it just fucks with you the whole, the whole time. It's like, oh, the game tells you, like, oh, yeah, if you die, you're gonna lose your save progress. You don't. Like, it just fucks with you. Like, that's one way it fucks with you. It tells you these things, and it's like, it doesn't mean it. It's like, oh, what? Like, yeah. It, 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 it's, it, it's, it's a great game. I do like, I love it, because it's so, like, um, it's made by Ninja Theory, which makes, like, shitty-ass games, like, the Devil May Cry reboot that sucked, and, <laughs> and I'm saying that, like, I was, like, I was going and expecting to hate it, and then I was like, what else did Ninja, didn't Ninja Theory make one good game? I think it was Hellblade, personally, because, like, they did Heavenly Sword, they did Enslaved, and they did, uh, DMC. All those games suck? And they did Metroid Other M, too. Uh, DMC, <laughs> like, I feel like DMC is one of those games where it's, like, the gameplay could be fun, but the story is just trash. Like, it's like, oh, okay, Virgil wears a fedora, and he, and mainstream <laughs> media is evil, guys. Oh, hipsters are the true hero. Like, it's just... Bullshit! Like my favorite, my favorite thing about that was when I forgot who it was, but they were like, "Dante will never have white hair again." And then, like two weeks later, it's like Devil May Cry Four. It's like what? Yeah, to me, to me, <laughs> uh, well, not even Devil May Cry Four. It's just to me, like throw threw in a fucking costume pack yeah, with, right, with, yeah. with, with, with white hair. But uh, like all those games are just either bland at best or just trash. Like they, they're, they're I mean, I think Devil May Cry sucks. I, I, the, the reboot of it, I think the gameplay is, they had to make a definitive version to fix the issues that people had with it. You're talking specifically about DMC. Yeah. I love Devil May Cry. I, I do okay, love, I do love that franchise, yeah, but the reboot was just like, they changed so much and they made the story so like typical, like, oh, mainstream stuff is evil. Oh, this stuff that's not consumerism is great. Like, it's just the most like shallow level of of storytelling even for devil may cry standards it's like yeah i i have to say i did buy dmc but never played it, it even when i bought it i was like i think i bought it on sale so it's probably like ten dollars yeah but i was like this just looks generic yeah DMC. like this i played the demo and what on the ps3 and what drove me away was that enemies would change their color to be like oh if they're red enemies you have to use red weapons if they're blue use blue weapons and i was like what what are we doing? Like what what it's is like this? Donkey Kong sixty four all over again. Yeah, like it's just you gotta use the blue do Donkey Kong to get the blue bananas. It's like, all right, come on. Yeah, it's just, it's just kind of like it, it slows the the action down, and it's like this is Devil May Cry. Why are we slowing down the hack and slash? But, yeah, the whole point of Devil May Cry is to like look cool and like kill enemies and look stylish. Yeah, the other issue is like that game oh, just threw right. out ranks too, like. Even for, if you're going for ranks, it, it was very forgiving. Like, you could just do one combo and be like, all right, S rank, you did it. It's like, <laughs> I did, like, the most basic combo and I got an S rank? Like, really? Like, so they did a definitive version that made it more like, okay, now you need skill to get S. It's like, yeah, exactly. This is, this is what should have been. Like, they, they had to make a definitive version to make the game, like, fun. And it, yeah. that, that's just a lot. I need to play this game. 
<laughs> yeah, like Hellblade is like I I think they're wasting their time with these other games. Hellblade is at least like it's more like engaging both like story wise and visually. Like it's a, it it's also like a third person like VR game, which is like who does who does that? Like oh, you're in third person, but it's a VR yeah. game. The uh. The other thing is that, like, they also fuck with your senses because they have, like, because the character's schizophrenic, so you're hearing ten different voices talk to you. Like, oh, you're lost. You don't know where you're going. Where, where you go? Ah, oh, she doesn't know where she's going. She's a fucking idiot. It's like, oh, oh shit. Like, I do kind of like that. It just oh, it layers that. that. That's kind of creepy. Yeah, it's it adds this, like, and, like, you get this other person that talks to you as well that, like, shows up, and it's, like, very odd, too. Like, he's, like, this is, like, very threatening guy, like, you're going in there, and you oh, they, they try to take, I don't know, it's like fucked up, like, demonic shit, like, it's, it's really that's good. Like a, that's, like, a fun way to, to do, the, like, the, the stupid Sonic Adventure thing, where they always have a fucking character telling you, press the A button to jump over this thing, <laughs> they it's, like, a demonic voice in your head, like, press the A button, you dumb fuck. <laughs> this game doesn't even, like, give you a tutorial, it just throws you in, and it's, like, the, the, the combat they throw you in, it's, like, figure it out it's like oh, oh shit like i didn't know you could evade until like later it's like oh i could have been evading attacks but yeah. uh it, it's it's nice it's a nice it's a nice game i so you know that's yeah again it's got nothing to do with bloodstain though <laughs> we, we we were going going off the rails uh, yeah, it's just it's just a podcast now. It's just a fucking general gaming podcast. Yeah, I think I'm I'm just gonna name this like <laughs> Big Bud Game Big Bun Game Club, uh Bloodstained and, and more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um Yeah, but I think we should start. Okay, since we're gonna go off topic anyway, I gotta say one more thing about Metal Gear Solid 3. Because I really appreciate because Metal Gear Solid 2, I think the biggest cliffhanger was in the when this in the post credits. When Otacon and Snake are talking, he's like, I found, and Otacon's like, I found all the, the Patriots, 12 yeah, the 12 people. members, they're all he's dead. Like, and he's like, yeah, like, who are they? And he's like, they're all dead. Don't talk about hundred years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but then Metal Gear Solid 3 explains that. Well, yes and no, because it says, like, okay, the philosophers changed their names to uh, the Patriots, but it doesn't really explain, like, why they were dead or whatever, but... Then four comes out and says, "Oh yeah. no! Like that was bogus information. Like, like, like." Oh, that's right. It did just say it's all bullshit. Yeah, um, like they said, like, "Oh yeah, they gave him like old information that was like for the philosoph." Like the information they got was about the philosophers. Right. So, so really, four just deleted all the things I thought were brilliant. I got to replay all of them. Yeah, I, I think the one thing that always gets me is the part that Sigint was the DARPA chief. And I'm like, did he have that planned out somehow, Kojima? Because I it's think... so brilliant. Because he goes, Liquid's like, you fool. You've killed him. Because Ocelot tortures the DARPA chief to death. Yeah. But it makes perfect sense if he knew the DARPA chief was Sigint. Yeah. Because I, he would tell all the shit. I think um, it, it's that one of those happy those moments where it's like it just happened to coincide because i think i think by three he made that decision because like one's like okay he's the darpa chief yippity do and then like you know two okay this and that three i think it's like when they made second he's like i'm gonna make second the darpa chief uh you know hey if he dies he dies like you know because you can argue you can argue it makes sense either way like even if it doesn't if, even if he wasn't tied to the patriots it still made sense i would say it makes no sense Ocelot would not kill anyone on like by accident. But if it was he, on purpose, it makes perfect sense if it was on purpose. Yeah, but if yeah, but well, no, 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 it could still be on purpose because he was also a double agent for Solidus. Uh, tr so you Solidus could be like, "Yo, fuck Liquid up, dude." It's like, "All right, sir." <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm giving it too much credit. And it's then also like, uh, the Darpa chief. I mean, also I could just be planning as well, like, oh, if he kill him, like. I mean, if you could get Snake to activate Metal Gear. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I that know, angle's that is, a little weak, too, but actually, I think... You know what? Metal Gear Solid is so full of shit all the time. It's like, you fight all that... And even the first one is like, you do all this stuff, and it's like, 
we wanted you to do that the whole time. And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, so, like, and, nothing mattered up until you fight Metal Gear at the end. And it didn't make any sense with, like, the Codex, I never understood. Like, do they see each other with the Codex? Or is it just, like, I, I, you could just hear them? Because, like, how the fuck can Miller say, do you like my sunglasses? Like, <laughs> how do you know you... And then, and then, what also is dumb is that, like, it's... A, Liquid did no effort to change his voice. So it's like... I know. That's the best part. It's like, what? He sounds exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, man. And then I love, I love like, when, when, like, you play through it the second time, and then, like, you, you destroy the Heim D, and then you try to call Master Miller. Yeah. And there's no answer. It's so funny. I do, I do think that it was kind of fun. It's also funny in 3, where... If you go to, uh, I think when you get to near Sokolov, if you call the boss, she doesn't answer at all. So like, yeah. I think if you, I don't. I it might also be a story a story cutscene, but also if you talk to um, Zero, he says like, oh, we don't know why he can't talk to her. It's weird. It's like maybe she's in a sub and the sub's fucked up. I, and it's like okay, and then like you see the boss on the bridge. And he's like, what are you doing here? It's like, what do you think? What do you think <laughs> what could possibly go wrong like i don't know like snake is like i, I remember reading in brawl they have like a summary and it's like oh he has the highest iq i was like this dude says what and ha huh all the time it's like dumbest fuck of all time yeah it's a, it's a wonder that he survived all these battlefields because he's a dumb as shit metal all he does is ask questions he yeah say something, and like, he'll just be like a piece of paper Internet, Metal Gear. <laughs> the only thing he's intelligent with, I, probably, is like how to how to finish a mission, but not what's going on otherwise. Like and how to break people's necks. Yeah, he fucking is an idiot. Oh, like, that makes me. That, that reminds me. I was playing uh, Metal Gear Solid Three with my um, uncle. He was watching me play, and you know, if you're, like you mash circle, you just do like the rapid stun lock. Yeah. I was doing that. My uncle's like, "Are you fucking him?" Like. Because, because he saw like the, because it was top down and the sees like this, so it's like it's like what what kind of game is this? It's like oh no, I I, I was choking him. And he's like, hey, love okay. can bloom on a battlefield. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's what we learned in Metal Gear, dude. It's and then an aunt that had oh uh, this weird interest in Metal Gear, so I was like writing these. This is back in high school. I was writing these dumbass fucking emails to her, like talking about like oh well in Metal Gear like. Snake did this and this happened, all this stuff, and she's like, "Oh, cool!" Like, and then I play, I would play like Mario in front of her, like, and she would just a ask me straight up, "Is that Snake?" <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I wrote all those emails, and she says that. I was like, "God damn it!" That was like a fucking burn <laughs> at that point. <laughs> but I mean, she she's like you know older than like I me. Mean, she's like a you know yeah. older, so it's not so it's not like it's like oh, come on. <laughs> it's so it's so funny. This we're talking. We're supposed to be talking about bloodstain, but we're, we've you know, been talking about. I, I think. The whole time. I think what I'm just getting. I was trying to be an introductory game. thing to be like, oh, meet, meet like this. I mean, that's. No, it's fine. I think this is great. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, at least out. they get some. It's some. It's some something. They get something out of it. Like it's not like oh, we're talking about like fucking boring ass shit. <laughs> no, no, it's cool. But yeah, but I really want to get started in the game, so I say this is a good stopping point. How yeah, long have we been yeah. Oof, uh, probably like <laughs> an hour twenty minutes. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah, well, that's a that's a good podcast episode. Yeah, it is. It's not as bad as I was thinking internally. I thought it was like three hours. I was like, oh shit, it's gonna be three. Is <laughs> but no, it's like, and this is honestly like around the time I was thinking mentally, like, oh, it's gonna be like an hour or two, like between that. Yeah. All right. Well, this is perfect. Yeah. I say we get. Start I'm itching to get started, so I'm oh, gonna yeah, start same. playing right now. All right. All so, right. that'll be it for this video. Um, do you have anything you want you want to plug? Me? I have nothing to plug. I'm a bum. I have a corporate job. Uh, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so, that'll be it. Uh, next time we talk, we will hopefully be further into Bloodstained. Uh, I will say, <laughs> I will say, I might not be able to play for three days because I'll be taking care of my brother's uh, pet on Tuesday through Thursday. But I will be playing it. The other days, so probably by next Sunday, I'll I'll have more to say. All yeah, the we'll, same. we'll see how far we get. Yeah. Go All on. right. <laughs> All Talk right, to you that'll later. be it. Bye bye.